I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not look to the proud, to those who turn aside to false gods. Many, Lord my God, are the wonders you have done, the things you have planned for us. None can compare with you. Were I to speak and tell of your deeds, they would be too many to declare. The first lesson is found in the book of Galatians, chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish? After beginning by means of the Spirit, are you now trying to finish by means of the flesh? Have you experienced so much in vain, if it really was in vain? So I ask, does God give you his Spirit and work miracles among you by the works of the law, or by your believing what you heard? So also Abraham believed God and was credited to him as righteousness. Understand then, that those who have faith are children of Abraham. Scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announce the gospel in advance to Abraham. All nations will be blessed through you, and so those who rely on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We invite you to stand. The Gospel reading is found in the book of Luke, chapter 11, beginning with verse 11. Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You may be seated. Amen. You can uh, grab a seat, or if you're so inclined, you're welcome to stay standing. (laughs) Well, good morning. It's almost, well, usually this late service, I used to get to the point where it was good afternoon, but we're not there yet. So, we're going to stick with good morning. I'm going to do a very youth ministry thing, and I'm starting my timer. Um, It'll quietly let me know when when I should be done. Pastor Susan told me that I have as much time as I would want, so I went ahead and set the timer for about three hours. Um, Those of you that are so inclined to stay standing, you may want to change your mind now. It is good to be here. As mentioned, my name is Jeff Stevenson. Most people around here don't actually know that that's my name. Uh, I'm known as Fedge. That came as a nickname well, a long time ago. Um, and it's just Jeff backwards. And it stuck um, and has been around. And even my parents now occasionally call, that, call me that, which is a little odd. Um, but I do, I've been doing the youth ministry here at Good Shepherd for quite a long time. And it is a joy and a privilege to be with you this morning. Those of you that are in the room, it is good to see you. Those of you at home, man, I like what you've done with the place. Um, the color looks good. The plants look healthy. Thanks for letting us into your home. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's a joy to be with you online as well. Thank you for inviting us into your home, literally all over the world. That is one of the things that over this past year that we have learned, that the gospel will not be stopped. And we have seen a different a variety of people, not just join Good Shepherd, but just join churches, literally from all over the world, Right? Shortly after Easter here at Good Shepherd, I noticed uh, um, somebody interacting with us on our Facebook from India. Um, uh, Lord have mercy on what's going on in that country right now with uh, the health system and p- 
people that are ill. And actually, if you would, just pray with me. Lord, we pray that you would, you would go and bring health and strength and safety and resources and life to the people that are struggling. Uh, so, Lord, be present. Be present and powerful in that place. Amen. Anyway, so they, somebody uh, who's a pastor in India doing ministry, and he liked our, one of our services and clicked the little thumbs up button and, hey, I like, and he's been following us. We posted a photo of our sanctuary, kind of the altar and all the Easter decorations. He liked it so much that he thought it would speak to his own congregation there in India. He grabbed it and used it. It's his Facebook church page header and background. So when people join him online in India, it's like they're right here. I mean, it's just God is amazing. Uh, today with me in Family Ministry Sunday... I get the privileged opportunity to come and join with you, both here in the room and at home, and I'm going to do something that you might be surprised by. I want us to celebrate this last year. You probably up to this point haven't heard anybody say, let's celebrate this last year, because you know what? It hasn't felt like much to celebrate. But what I want us to do is I want us to be challenged by the work of the Holy Spirit and recognize that God's fingerprints have been all over. We have not been left. We have not been abandoned. We have not been forsaken. God has been ever-present in the midst of something that none of us have ever experienced in our lifetimes, and prayerfully we will never experience again. None of us even have a point of reference as to how to, how to have approached this whole thing. Many tears have been shed. Many struggles have been had. I know from just personal experience, if somebody were standing in front of me and saying, let's celebrate this year, I would be like, mm, not so much. But God has been present. God has been present, and God is pushing us forward. As was mentioned, next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, and we'd encourage you to wear red. We all got the memo, and we almost made it. We all wore orange. <laughs> Maybe by next week, this will start to turn red. I don't know. Um, apparently, uh, well, moving forward, the week before Pentecost will now be Orange Sunday. So we expect you to go ahead and jot it down your calendars. Come next week, and you can be children's church supporters by wearing orange. And it's fantastic when you're out in traffic, perfectly safe. <laughs> We're celebrating together. But I want to celebrate with you by remembering some hard things. Travel back with me to last March, March of 2020, specifically March 11th. I was gathered with the students down in the youth room, which is just down, down the stairs, down in the basement, the trench, aptly named, because, well, we actually, for those of you, some people have asked, why is it called the trench? Well, when the church was being built in 2004, and that section was all dug up, it was an enormous pit. It was a giant trench. And we thought, hey, let's call it the trench. And it stuck, kind of like Fedge. Um, just kind of what happens with me, apparently. So we were down in the trench for youth group on a Wednesday night, and we had just been having some activities and having a lot of fun, and there were about 30 or so kids gathered together. And suddenly one of them gets a notification on his phone. And I watched as kind of the, I wouldn't say the life drained out of his face, but concern came over him. You've probably all been around when somebody gets like a phone call or a message that it's very clear something's up. And I said, oh, wow, Jacob, what's up? He looks at his phone. He looks at me. He looks at his phone. Rudy, Rudy Gobert's got it. And I'm like, what? Rudy Gobert's got COVID. And nobody in that moment knew what it meant. And then a little while later, before our time in the youth group was done, not only had we learned that Rudy Gobert was positive, we learned that Donovan Mitchell was positive, we learned that that basketball game was canceled, we learned that the Utah Jazz were stranded in Oklahoma City for an unknown amount of time, and we learned that the entire NBA season was canceled till further notice. And we knew we didn't have any answers, and we were confused, and we were scared. And this young man that first got the alert, he knew his fantasy team was just flushed down the toilet. <laughs> that was, in the moment, that was actually his biggest concern. 
No, he was as concerned as the rest of us. But in hindsight, he's like, oh man, I had such a good team. But we were left in that moment going, whoa, we don't know what to do. One of the things this past year has taught us that I think if this were to ever happen again, we should be reminded we know what to do. Let's pray. Let's seek the work of the Holy Spirit and guide us, direct us. Let's now, in that moment, did we pray? Yes. Did we know what to do? No. And guess what? That's okay. Because we were looking to be people of faith. Now, as I was preparing to share with you this morning, I realized I want to share some of my own journey with you because I don't think I was the best person of faith through this entire year. I had my moments, but I had my moments. I had really good moments when I'm like, yes, I, my faith is with you, God. And other times, it might have been like, you foolish Galatians. It might have been like, you foolish Fedge. Are you putting your faith in the works of flesh? Or are you putting your faith in the work of the Spirit? Are you turning to me, or are you reacting in fear? Now, each one of us have um, varying different stories, but for me, what that really looked like, it's not a matter of like what my reaction was or what my strategy was, but it was the condition of my heart that was the reflection of whether I was being a person of faith or whether I was being a person that was looking inward and being fearful. Had many moments, ups and downs, I remember one of my pinnacle moments of feeling eh, not so good. Early on, when this all unfolded, we were in this sanctuary because this was one of those God moments because we saw God's fingerprints all over the place, albeit nobody was in the room. We had to live stream everything. And early on, we had cables. It, this was like, uh, it's like the spaghetti bowl of wires. We had wires running left and right. We had stuff all over the place. And pretty much every Sunday morning, if you were joining us like those that are still joining us online, I was sitting at a table right back over here. And we had a small group of musicians and pastors officiating the service. And we came to Easter, and all of us were in this place going, oh man, we have Easter online. But my heart sank. And this was a moment for me, confession time. My heart sank on Easter morning when sitting there, and Pastor Susan up front, she gave a glorious sermon, and I should have been right tracking with what the Holy Spirit was doing and saying, yes, Jesus, amen. But she cried out, he is risen. And that was what happened. Nobody responded. And it was a surreal moment for me going, oh, the room was quiet. The room was empty. And it felt like my heart was too. So let's change that. I'm going to ask that you'd help me redeem that moment. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Hope is rising. Hope is rising. And the hope that comes through the Holy Spirit, the hope that God pours into this world through His, through His Son, Jesus, is a hope that is genuine. It is not a hope that the world offers that is misplaced or based on the issues of this world. This is a hope with purpose, a hope with a plan, a hope that is taking us places. And this is the hope that is rising. Then now I've had enough time and I've spent enough quiet time to realize in that moment when I sat at that table and nobody in the room yelled out, He is risen indeed. He was still risen indeed. Absolutely, He was still risen indeed. As We're going to celebrate family ministry today. We're going to celebrate what God has been doing. However, I want you to know the past year has been really tough. Pastor Susan and JoLynn and I had many days where we'd gathered, we'd pray, and we shed tears, and we were so exhausted with the idea of saying, I'm sorry, we can't do that. That event's canceled. I'm sorry, that won't happen this year. 
We had to cancel VBS. We had to cancel summer camp. We didn't go on our mission trips. We didn't know. I mean, one thing after another, it felt like the dominoes were following, falling, and we were left whew, tired. But then in the quiet moments, in the whispers, in those moments, the psalmist was talking about, you lifted me up out of the muck and the mire. When I was lifted up and we as a team were lifted up, we started to hear the whispers of the Holy Spirit saying, don't say what you can't do. Listen to what I tell you you can do. And guess what? We got creative. We did a, a, a virtual talent show. People submitted their, their uh, talents online and we put together one of the funnest talent shows we've had. We did an online vacation Bible school. We went and visited homes. We delivered all sorts of things. We actually started this fantastic new tradition of going to high school graduates' homes and delivering their gifts and planting a yard sign and saying with, alongside their family, we celebrate. Yesterday, the tradition continued, and we did it with 12 more students. You know what? Long after this thing is all done, I want to keep doing that and celebrate with you and your families and your students by coming to your home and just hey, good job. We're excited for you. We're not going to be limited by these four walls. That's one of the things that God said. Stop thinking in terms of why can't people gather, but rather start thinking about where can you go? Where can you meet? Where can you be together? Because his church is not dependent on a physical location. His church is dependent on people gathering whether that be online, whether that be through a phone call, whether that be through a text message, whether that be through being physically together or physically spaced. It's about connecting with each other. Just a couple weeks ago, I had a young man send me, well, he has been joining us for a year online youth group. He actually moved early in the pandemic. He moved to a different state didn't have time or opportunity to connect with the church, so he was been, he's been joining us online for youth group. He stayed after and said, hey, Fedge, can I talk to you for a minute? I said, sure. So he stuck around after online. We were chatting, and he just said, I wanted to say thank you. Oh, thank you for what? The game wasn't even all that much fun today. No, it's not about that. He said, I want to thank you because a year ago you sent me a text and just said, hey, I'm praying for you. And he said, I knew that was the truth. That text is the reason I'm here today. That's why I say thank you. We're physically distant from each other. But I listened to the Holy Spirit that wanted to connect people together. And God is good. He has been present. His fingerprints are all over this hard, hard year. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 through 25 Say this. It's really good. I'll get there eventually. <laughs> Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place, since we have confidence to enter the whole most holy place. Why do we have confidence? We have confidence because of what God has done. We have confidence because of what the sacrifice that His Son Jesus made for us. We can enter into the most holy place with this confidence, and that's the crazy thing that God has been challenging me with this year, is letting my confidence be true and faith-filled. Uh, through the Holy Spirit, by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great high priest, that is Jesus, over the house of God, let us draw near to God. That is what we have learned over this last year, working as a church, working with your students, working with your kids. God's fingerprints are all over because no matter what the world might do, his people can't be stopped from drawing near to him. It's not dependent upon the four walls. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with full assurance of the faith that brings 
of what faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience, and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. Again, the hope that is rising, it is a hope that is offered through the work of God, through His Son, Jesus Christ, poured into us by the Holy Spirit, this hope that is rising that is not based on the works of the flesh, but it is a certain hope with a purpose to drive us forward in His glory. Hold unswervingly to that hope that we profess. For he who promised is faithful. Let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the great and glorious day approaching. I'm celebrating with you because I think we as a church, not just Good Shepherd, but the body of Christ has learned this year that to gather together Yes, it's important to physically be together when we're able to. But it's about being together, whether it be online, whether it be through a text, through a phone call, through an email. It's a willingness to listen to the Holy Spirit and connect with one another as He leads. We're not called to be lone Christians in this world. But we can gather together for the sake of encouraging one another and spurring each other on. And guess what happens? We spur each other on even when we've had a really bad day even when we've been overwhelmed, even when we just visited someone in the hospital, even when things feel a little bit overwhelming, those moments when family ministry team and we were just praying and we would be tearful because of all the things we couldn't do and God was whispering, look at what you can do. Hebrews 11, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and the assurance of what we do not see. And this is where I want to turn the corner and end, is that we do not see what's next. We do not see what this next chapter of things look like. We don't know what the summer brings. We don't know what the fall brings. But guess what? We still have the hope in Jesus to trust and to move forward and to give Him glory in all that we say and that we do. We look forward with eager anticipation as this hope is rising within us and say, Lord, what would you have us do? So my invitation to us today as we've looked back over a year, and it's hard to celebrate a difficult year, but that's the invitation. But now we also need to turn our attention, much like you're invited, we, we literally invite you to wear red because, hey, you know what? It's Pentecost. It's fun. We are unified together. We're remembering what the Holy Spirit, what God did 2,000 years ago. But guess what? Just like right now, we're not just looking into the past and saying, oh, look at the good things. That is value. But we're also turning our eyes forward and saying, here we go. Lord, I am yours. I trust you. The church as a whole, Good Shepherd as a whole, the body of Christ as a whole around this planet, we're asking ourselves, what, is, what do you have in store for us? What new things can you have us do? Some of the old things don't work anymore. The hope is still the same. So we want to pray and look forward, not just to celebrate Pentecost next week, but we want to pray and look forward to what God would do. So as I close, I just want to pray in preparation for what God would do through the working of the Holy Spirit. Because like we read in the gospel, we serve a God that is far beyond what any of us can ever imagine. Which of you, as fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? I think this past year, some of us have moments where we feel like we got the scorpion. But guess what? God has been giving the egg. And we want to pray in preparation for what else he has to give us. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you. Even in this moment, it's hard for me to muster up those words. Lord, I thank you for this past year. Lord, I acknowledge that it has been painful.
<clears throat> Lord, I give you thanks, but I pray that you would, you would bring health. Pray that you would bring restoration to our loved ones. We pray that you would bring strength to us as believers. You, I pray that you would give us wisdom and discipline to represent you well, to walk in the confidence and the full assurance of our faith, not misplaced, but in the hope that you offer through your son Jesus. And Lord, just as in 2,000 years ago when the Holy Spirit broke through the temple veil and erupted into the world for all people and you changed the face of the earth, Lord, we pray that you would do the same now. Come, Holy Spirit. Change the face of this earth. Be in the lives of those that are struggling. Be in places like India that are just full of trauma at the moment. Lord, we pray that you would go to the healthcare professionals. We would pray that you would go to the first responders. We pray that you would go to anyone that is just sick or ill or on our heart right now, Lord, even now. We pray that you would come in this room, that you would release your Holy Spirit and work in us and bring to our heart's attention somebody that we should reach out to today. And Lord, let us be people of faith that we would not put that person off. We would not put that situation aside, but rather we would listen and maybe send a text, maybe make a phone call, maybe stop by and just say hello. We never know what your spirit is doing. And Lord, I give you thanks for the young man that is still here. Because your spirit prompted us to care for him. Come Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Amen.